Hey all, so today we're going to be working with some ESP8266 stuff and I've got an ESP-12 here, 12F I believe, it's on a little breakout board. We've got it hooked up inside a waterproof, uh, well it says it's waterproof, a waterproof uh, outdoor box. I'm not quite sure what these are generally used for, um, but it has been running outside uh, with a TWP uh, 36GZ just there uh, for about five days, so 366 hours, I think. No, sorry, 117 hours, 366 um, recordings have made. So every 20 minutes it wakes from deep sleep and uh, posts the, uh, the temperature to my website uh, using my little IoT pipe. Now, I've had a bit of a problem with it. Now, it, it was one degree, maybe minus one degree outdoors the other day uh, at night time, and this only dropped down to 10 degrees. Now, I know it's insulated. There's a, sort of a bit of trapped air in there and it's not exposed to wind and stuff like that, but it should, still should drop down further than that. So I think it must be self-heating. So the, the batteries in here and the regulator that's on the board will be heating up this TWP uh, 36GZ and maintaining a roughly reasonable temperature in there of something like 10 degrees. Um, so I, I did see some variants. So it went, it went up to 16 one day and then it went down to, uh, to 12, down to 11, down to 10, but no further down. So it was self-heating is what I believe. Anyhow. I've decided that I need to measure the temperature from outside the case. And to do that, I'm going to be using one of these. This is a DS18B20, uh, which is a, a temperature monitor using the one wire system. So it has one wire of data that uh, it uses and the rest is power and ground. It can also use parasitic power, so it can, only, it can use just two wires. But I'm going to be using this instead. Now, I'm going to have to find a way of getting it into the case and sealing it. Uh, not completely waterproof, so I'm not expecting it to be submerged in water, but at least weatherproof. Now I'm going to start off trying with a hot glue gun. Um, I realise that the hot glue isn't exactly waterproof, but it should be water resistant. And this is raised off the, uh, the base of here. so. If any water does make it in there, it should just sit at the bottom and I'll just try and keep an eye on it. I did try and make this using these little Wemos um, boards. They're, they're clone boards, um, these ones, but um, I thought they would work, but I couldn't get them to, uh, to program at all. I couldn't get them to do anything. So uh, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or if anyone knows any specific problems with these type of clones. But I won't be using those. I wanted to use it because it had the uh, USB comms on board with the CH340G. Uh, and with this one, I had to use a USB to TTL adapter. Now, I'm going to show you a little circuit of what's going on, of how we've wired this up. So, uh, we've got our ESP-12 there. And our reset is, uh, it's got a pull up to 3.3 volts and it's also connected to GPIO 16. And that's important for the deep sleep. So when you have uh, deep sleep, you have it hooked up to GPIO 16 so it can wake up. And we've got our ADC, the only ADC on the ESP8266 is hooked up to the second pin, the central pin of the TW3, uh, TW36GZ, and then the other's power and ground. GPIO 2's got to pull up, uh, I think it's 10K. I didn't write it on there because I haven't measured the value and I can't remember if I use that. I think it's 10K, 10K should work. Uh, and also the same pull up on GPIO zero. Now it's a, a nice little breakout board actually. It has, uh, it, it came with the components on there. Um, the soldering could leave uh, a little to be desired there, but uh, it works fine. Uh, I did have to solder the, the header on there, which is why that looks all hinky. Uh, but it came with the ASM 11111111117. God, there's a lot of ones in there. Uh, I think it's ASM1117 and it's the 3 volt 3 one. Uh, and on the front we've just got some uh, resistors. I think it might even already have a pull up on there for the CHPD which I mean it works uh, without 
my own pull-up, so I'm guessing it does. Uh, and it does have another pull-up on there as well, and I can't really see what that one goes to. But it works great, and I just wanted to see, because it's been working for five days now, these batteries were fully charged, so it will have dropped some voltage. Uh, it's been in deep sleep mode, which makes it use about 90 microamps, I think. Uh, but at the same time, I, don't, I haven't been able to measure that yet, so uh, it, it could be more than that. Uh, so let's have a little measure. So this is after 117 hours. Oops, if I can hook these up. All right, so after 117 hours, oops, a daisy. We are looking at 5.23 volts, 5.24. Oh, it's climbing or dropping, what to go. We can't make up its mind. So 5.2, so the nominal battery voltage of the rechargeable batteries uh, is 1.2, so that would be 4.8. So they are still fully charged. Uh, so very little energy has been lost from these so far. So I would imagine they can go for at least a month, maybe more. Uh, so actually the deep sleep mode is working really well. I'm quite pleased with it. Uh, so I'm gonna go away. Um, this might take a little bit of time and figure out how I can drill into the case and uh, put this in and also uh, seal it up. Um, hopefully this should give me a nice outside temperature rather than the temperature inside the case, which is what I don't want. So, uh, and then I'll, uh, I'll look at the, uh, the data again when it comes through. So this is the data that um, I've gotten so far and you can see it doesn't really dip very far down, but the temperature today uh, is, is really low and uh, when I popped it outside it wasn't reading very low at all. So there's too much insulation or self-heating, so it certainly needs something external.